Talk to me about the changing of the name of the New York Golden Gloves. I guess, you know, what is it called now, Ringmasters? Uh, I guess the only thing that really changed from it is just the title. I mean, there's so much history behind the Daily News Golden Gloves. And then at the end, you know, winning that Golden Glove, that chain to put it around your neck. But I mean, the principle behind the tournament, I think, is very, very similar. Uh, fortunately, they moved it back to the Garden, which I thought was really great. And because um, as an amateur fighter, I guess, you, of course, you would want to fight it. Who doesn't want to fight it in Madison Square Garden? And I guess that, that, that kind of just uh, brings more, I guess, spotlight back to the tournament. But I feel like it's still the same, you know. The amateurs make it to the finals, they fight in the garden. Unfortunately, they don't get the, the chain no more, but they walk around with a nice ring. <laughs> <laughs> what what makes the garden so prestigious that amateur fighters want to fight there? I just guess the history behind it. I guess all those big fights that occurred there, every other fight that had to walk through there, and it's just it's a very motivating uh, atmosphere. It's a very it's like you can say that you fought in the same arena as one of the greats, you know. And not many people can say that even as a pro, not many people get to fight in that arena. So as an amateur fighter to be able to make it there, it's pretty grand. Talk to me about your amateur career. I mean, honestly, I wish I was a little bit more consistent about my career. I'm very, uh, it's like, I can get in the zone and then once I'm done competing, it's like I want to take like three months off and then getting back onto it is like very difficult. Um, but you know, it's, it's one thing you have to realize about this sport is that you have to love it. I mean, you have to love it. The good, the bad, you have to love this sport because honestly, to wake up every morning, to come to the gym, to spar, to find time to run. Uh, it's just, it's non-stop work and you have to love the work. Because if you don't, then you're going to be very miserable, you're not going to enjoy it. And you're pretty much going to be unmotivated and you're not going to want to do it. So, you pretty much just have to love the sport. What's your biggest challenge as an amateur fighter? I just think right now, finding my motivation to continue, you know, like, uh, as fighters, you want to have something that drives you, something that that makes you wake up in the morning, you know, ready to take on the world, you know, like, because it's not an easy process preparing for these fights, and sometimes, you know, it's very discouraging when things don't go your way, you get hurt, um, you know, things happen, and it takes a very strong individual to be able to pull through that time in and time again, you know, so I think right now it's just my time, my, my biggest issue is just finding the motivation to, to be consistent with it. What are some of the tricks you use to motivate yourself when you're not motivated to get up and run those miles in the morning? Well, for me, I feel that when I am in the zone, it's just like, I just want to be great. You know, like I tell myself, I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered. Like, I want people to know my name, you know, like, it's things like that that just drive me, you know, that, and, you know, behind all that, it's like, I want to compete and make my mom proud, you know, I want to make my father proud, like, I want them, when they speak of me, to feel really good about me when they, when they speak of me, you know, and that's something that, no matter, if, you know, the results in my fights or how far I get in tournaments, you know, my mother's always going to be proud of me, but that, that's what usually pushes me and motivates me to go, you know, I want to make my team, my coach proud, I want to make everybody that comes out to support me, who comes out to cheer for me, I want to make them proud, you know, that's usually things like that that tend to motivate me again when I'm in the zone because when I'm not in the zone like don't talk to me about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fighters, all fighters actually, one of the main things that come up when they have their first fight is nerves. Mm -hmm. They get really really nervous. Would you have some advice for a fighter fighting their first fight how to deal with the nerves? I mean just constantly you know just take a deep breath and tell yourself that everything's gonna be all right. You'd be surprised how fast those three rounds go by like it, like you blink and it's like shit it's over already you know um honestly just breathe and just have confidence in yourself have confidence in your team trust whoever's working your corner because at the end of the day that's the only person you can really rely on when you're in that ring and you know just really believe that everything you did in preparation is enough and more than because you're never going to feel uh, like what you did in training camp, you're always going to be like, man, I should have ran that extra mile, I should have done this, I should have done that extra run. It's like, just try to calm yourself down and tell yourself that it's okay, that everything you did was enough, and that, that you got this. You know, when you step inside that ring, just mentally tell yourself that there's no one better than you, that 
even if you have to lie, like really, no matter how much experience the other person in that opposite corner has, just really mentally, you know, just put it in there that no, when you're in that ring, no one is better than you. Walk us through your first fight. Oh man, my first fight I remember was in a New York boxing tournament back in Gleason's. So the night before I had did an overnight shift because I used to work as a doorman. And so right after work, I used to work on 48th Street and uh, 8th Avenue. I came to the gym to weigh myself, went home, ate for like, slept for like maybe, I don't know, four or five hours, got up, went to the weigh-in. And uh, at the time, uh, one of the officials that used to, for USA Boxing, she used to work at the gym. And I remember her coming over to me and telling me, she's like, Henry, you've been matched with this kid who's just now coming out of the jails. Please be careful, keep your hands up. In my head, I'm like, fuck, why did you tell me this? I'm like worrying and stuff. Um, you know, and then once we got into that ring, I just remember that bell rang and for a quick, for a quick minute, all I thought was like, what the, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I'm not supposed to be here. And then once the punches started flying, it's just like, it becomes familiar ground. I mean, you're breathing, you're like super exhausted. Like it hit to a point where I felt like the air I was breathing was like super cold. Uh, you know, it's just, it's an experience really. It's an experience. So you were fighting an ex-con your first fight. An ex-con? Did you say, she said you were just coming out the junior, jail? J.O. Junior, junior Olympics. Oh, J.O. Junior Olympics. I thought you said J.O. No, no, no. I'm like, they put this dude in the middle of an ass thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Junior Olympics, so I believe he just had to turn 17. And so, yeah, you saw kids who fight from under 17, they're considered J.O.'s, Junior Olympics. And once they turn 17, they become considered senior fighters. So, yeah, I got matched with one of those guys. <laughs>